So I'm going to go over my way of making speculaas cookie, uh, usually referred to as a Dutch windmill cookie, also popular in Belgium and Germany. So I'll go over the uh, list of ingredients, two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon nutmeg, three quarters of a teaspoon clove powder, half a teaspoon of ginger, quarter teaspoon each of white pepper and black pepper, quarter teaspoon of cardamom, one large egg, one and a half cups of flour, half a cup of cold butter, must be cold, a third of a cup sugar, quarter teaspoon baking soda, three quarters of a cup brown sugar, whether light or dark, doesn't matter, half a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can use pure or artificial. The first step is to have your cold butter that's been in the fridge made into probably half tablespoon or a tablespoon chunks. Put that in the bottom of your mixing bowl. And we're going to blend the two sugars with the butter to start with. The challenge with this recipe, at least while well, shooting a video, is uh, the longer you work with the mixture, like the dough or the mixture, um, the warmer it, the butter gets and it, it's a little bit harder to work with. It becomes kind of sticky and gooey. So a few times I had to put it in the fridge, but uh, when you're doing this recipe, when you're not filming a video, it goes a little bit easier. So I use a hand mixer. You can use a, a stand mixer as well, but I just find this a little bit faster. You can increase the speed as you go. You can start off slow and then just uh, increase the speed. So we want to blend our sugars and butter together and then add our dry mixes, so all our spices and our baking soda. You don't have to mix for very long at this stage, just a, kind of a chunky, sandy uh, consistency. But you do want to make sure there's no dry ingredients left in that it's uh, well blended with the butter. Takes a couple minutes. Just keep adjusting your speed, but we're going to add all our spices now and our baking soda. Now it does become a little bit thicker now because of all the dry ingredients and it uh, dries up a bit. So you do have to adjust your speed to go a little bit faster and then lift your paddles up a little bit. Now we're going to add our flour. And we'll start somewhat on slow and then speed up. Again, you can do this in a stand mixer. It's probably, well, it's less labor intensive, but um, this is quicker and it does the same job in my mind. Okay, so this takes a while to incorporate the two together, but just keep working it. You might have to stop and scrape down the, the sides, but if you just bring your uh, mixer up along the edges, uh, it generally brings everything down. So these are also known as uh, windmill cookies because they use molds to, uh, to, to form a, a pattern of, uh, you know, either center class or or a windmill or other shapes. Um, generally it's stamped into the uh, the cookie dough. So uh, I don't have those. I just have three different patterns. Um, so yeah, if you want to invest in the proper molds, you could end up with your, uh, your windmill cookies. But maybe next time. So we've added our liquid ingredients, so the egg and the uh, vanilla extract. And you can see it's a little uh, starting to come together a little bit better now. And you want to just keep mixing until it becomes a little bit finer. But it's not going to become smooth. We're going to work it a bit on a, on a surface. So just get it so it's, uh, it's fairly consistent in terms of its uh, chunks. So the flavor is uh, quite complex because of all, you know, there's, I think there's eight or nine spices. So it's not necessarily like gingerbread. Um, it's not, it doesn't have a bite to it. 
but it is spicy so it, you can really um, pick out several spices uh, but not ginger in particular so not any one spice is overpowering it's kind of an interesting taste so this is just my method of making sure they don't stick to the cutting board so I just have two paper clips that I use to hold the parchment paper onto the cutting board of course you could always uh, flower a work surface and have that as your non-stick uh, coating but uh, I don't like to have too much flour on on these cookies and this seems to work well also the longer I take uh, the warmer the mixture is getting so they can become quite sticky so parchment paper seems to work well so you just want to turn out the cookie dough onto the surface and you just want to knead it a little bit with uh, with your hands uh, don't take too long because again you're going to warm it up too much so just kind of form it into a rough ball but it should hold together the the egg is the binding agent so now I always start with a uh, a larger rolling pin and then I switch to a smaller one so here I'm just kind of uh, getting it at a little bit of a larger circle and if you find your pin is sticking to your cookie dough you could always uh, have some flour available you could flour your pin So here I'm going to add a little bit of flour off to the side because I'm using a smaller roller and it was starting to stick so this does help. But you can certainly continue on with a larger uh, pin and just uh, flour your, your roller. Now the goal is to have about a quarter of an inch as your uh, thickness before you start cutting your shapes. And don't worry, this, uh, this flour will get blended into the cookie dough. This is just to help you from uh, having problems with it sticking. So Now you're going to do this several times because you're punching out the shapes and then you're going to reuse the cookie dough over and over until you're, you're pretty much done. So. I had a star and a snowman and a tree I believe so this is uh, my first go at it and usually you want festive kind of uh, shapes like either Christmas time or holidays is generally when these cookies are uh, are served so this is probably the most time-consuming part of this recipe having to punch it out and place them on a on your baking sheet and of course if you don't want to punch out shapes or use molds or stamps you could just make them into regular cookie shapes just by uh, using your hands and making a ball um, generally sometimes they'll put slices of uh, roasted almond on top of the cookie if it if it's not punched into a shape I've seen them with a, a few slices of almond but you know, nine times out of ten, you'll see the windmill shape or the uh, Dutch Santa Claus, Santa Claus is the most common uh, shapes of these cookies. Again, they're they're spicy, but they're not uh, hot spicy. Not like if you had a strong gingerbread. Generally, I only make these uh, one, once a year uh, around this time, at Christmas time. And 
you could I guess add sprinkles on top but um, that's just I guess not the traditional way but uh, you, you can do anything you want to the to your the top and the uh, the name of the cookie speculas is from the Latin term speculum because when they would make these cookies with the molds um, speculum means mirror image basically so the, uh, the whatever you stamp it out as it is the mirror image that comes out in the cookie so whatever mold um, is mirror imaged out onto the cookie so as you can see it, it can be a little bit sticky here so I did have to put it back in the fridge for a short period of time just because I was filming and things take a little bit longer setting up the, the shot and everything so but if you find it hard to work with, you you do have to get it down to a quarter of an inch thick because these are thin cookies and they're crunchy when they set up. So you want to place this in the fridge for 30 minutes. So all your cut out cookies, you want them to firm up in the fridge before you bake them. And, it, and in the meantime, you want to preheat your oven to 375 or 190 degrees Celsius. Now it's important to try to get the trays in the, the middle of the oven. Um, You'll find if the cookies are on the top rack or too close to the top of the oven, the, they tend to cook faster and almost burn. So I, I did burn a couple, I think, in the having them a little bit too close to the top of the oven. So it's tr try to get them in a, as close to the middle as possible. This is also important. You want to wait 10 minutes before you transfer into a wire rack. They have to kind of firm up and harden. So just give them a, 10 minutes to sit there, and then we can transfer to a wire rack. Some of them are, might be stuck together, you can just break them apart. And by this time they're not too hot anymore, so you could just uh, handle them by hand for the most part. But yeah, the kitchen really smells great because you're, you know, there's I think eight different spices that have all been cooking, so it smells great. And uh, this is what they turn out as. Let's break one open for you. So similar looking to gingerbread, but uh, a nice treat for this time of year. So give the recipe a try. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Please subscribe and bye for now.